Hi, I'm Adam Vergara, and you're watching Tennis Ninja TV. Aloha, tennis fans. Your boy's back. I'm Shane Cash in the Tennis Ninja. Welcome back to the show, guys. I am sorry I took off the last month or so, but I got life got busy. And I came up with a few new ideas, which you'll see in future episodes. A lot of things have happened, including me getting shirts. I have oh, tennis wow. ninja shirts, guys, and there's hats and visors on the way, stickers. I got some good stuff coming up for you guys. So you can DM me for those if you guys ever uh, would be interested in them, because I am selling these. Enough about me, guys. This is about my guest today. Uh, I have a guest who's a good friend of mine for the last 10 years on this island. He's originally from China, guys, but he's become quite the star here in Hawaii. He played college tennis for um, Brigham Young University in Hawaii under coach Dave Porter years ago. Uh, and now he's currently coaching college tennis for the University of Hawaii at Manoa. He's on the women's tennis team staff over there. Guys, say hello to my friend, Rong Ma. Rong, welcome to the show. Hi, Hi everybody. Uh, Shane, I need to DM you about the shirts. I want to get a few, yeah. <laughs> oh, awesome, man. Well, I like your shirt too, guys. Check his shirt out. Ooh. Oh, can you see? Okay. <laughs> At least you can see Hawaii. Go Bows. Wrong. Thank thanks for joining me today, bro. How have you been? I know we, we got out of lockdown about three months ago, and we played tennis, we coached tennis, and now, as of today, <laughs> this is day one of the second lockdown here in Hawaii. What's been happening in the world of wrong? Oh, really good. Yeah, I've been reading a lot. And yeah, the past few months, I've been playing a lot of tennis after the lockdown order. So yeah, good and bad. Uh, fun to play a lot and get the chance to train a little bit. But right now, this month, lockdown, I said I could not play, could not coach. But it's good to let the body heal and try to read a little bit more, focus on my dissertation. So not bad, you know, and I can serve more. Yeah. <laughs> I've been really fascinated uh, where you got started with tennis, Rong, um, because everybody knows you as the great player and up and coming coach that you are, which you do an amazing job out there, kids, uh, and your players at UH. But what was the motivation for Rong Ma years ago to pick up tennis? How did you get started in the sport? Yeah, I don't know. First, I think I was first grade, and my cousin played tennis. Like he was about like six years older than me. He's really good. But uh, when my parents, because my cousin stayed with us, because our house close to the elementary school and close to the tennis court. At the beginning, my cousin and my parents introduced me to tennis. But the coach said, "Oh, this kid, he doesn't look like." like to enjoy like physical activity that much you know just look at him he's very pale i mean my original like skin color really really pale and skinny so the coach said oh, oh he's more like a good student in the school i, I don't want a tennis sport like a lot of very physical demanding so so first they they don't take me but i don't care i was so young so i was a swimmer so at that point they, some some teachers, physical education teacher, check my body and then they send me to swimming team, the uh, amateur. So, but after every day finish uh, finish the practice, I would walk to the tennis court away from my cousin, so we can walk back to house. So the tennis coach saw me every day. I just sit there quietly, do my homework, drawings, but very quiet, very obedient. So. Later, the, the coaches took interest on me. And then one day she asked me, oh, would you like to try tennis? I don't know what the, what tennis it is, you know, it's too young. <laughs> oh yeah, sure. Because I always agreeable, you know, doesn't like to say no. Then I start getting in tennis. But because so many kids, I think, beginning doesn't have enough tennis courts. So we just practice with the, like a badminton, the birdie. Mm. I don't know, yeah, we just practice swimming, yeah. you know, I remember. So few kids just practice when coaches couldn't like put a lot of focus to the younger kids, the beginner kids, you know. So we mm -hmm. have to spend time just practice what coaches tell us to do. Some kids find like really boring, so they <laughs> stop coming in. But I, I guess I, I don't know. I, I think I, I could be patient, so I just <laughs> stick around. Then I start playing tennis. Around 10 years old, 12 years old, I, I stop, you know, because... This individual sport, kind of lonely sport. So 
that time I I was more inclined to soccer and basketball. Hmm. Yeah, so I play those a lot and train really hard. So at one point I I uh, I stopped playing tennis for a while. Not that focused. When I was like 12 or 13 playing some local junior tournaments, then I I got be really bad and by those kids train really well. Mm. They got a foreigner coach like well like developed players so they're very serious and very good. Then I lost belly O and O and and really quick. And some kids younger than me, and they're really strong. But I've, I, I kind of talk to myself. If when I train properly, I think I can catch up. You know. Mm. Then I start like, well, I want to just try to see. Then I start take tennis really serious at that point. Then I I train really hard. Like, really no no ten no course no people to play with. I just hit against the wall, and mm. gradually I catch up. So, yeah, that's it. Did I just hear right that Rong originally did swimming as well? I, I, I never knew that about you. That's interesting. And I also heard you like to hit against the wall, right? That, yeah. was, that helped your development a lot early? Yeah, yeah. I think the wall is the best practice partner. So yeah, that, at one point, I will hit the wall like every day, at least half hour. Wow, right. guys, that's two guests I've had on the show now. They endorse the wall, guys. That is yeah. the ultimate opponent. You can hit lots of balls. Wrong yeah. is a testament to that. As I know from your baseline game, your ground strokes are just solid. Did you have any highlights you'd like to share with us about your junior career? Because um, we, I'm not too familiar with how the junior circuit works in, uh, in China. How, how, how was that playing over there? Yeah, it's good. We at that point we are very confined, you know, but we still got a good competition. Not a lot of tournament, but yeah, as I told you, beginning I was pretty bad, you know, couldn't make it to the regional because I did not like take a lot of serious time and well trained. But later on I put a lot of focus. So in junior actually I represent Chinese Davis Club like junior team against Japan, Korea, like in an wow. Asian area and yeah, okay, like doubles, I rank number one in China under 18 singles, maybe like a top six. And I was practice partner for Nina. I don't know, some of you may know, she was two times uh, Grand Slam winner. So before mm. Olympic, um, we, we will train with them in Beijing before the Olympic game. And I'm okay. I mean, not the most talented players in my peer, but I have some like, some good resort, like some single circus, like adult champion, like some good prize money tournament, like a semi-final, top third in the nation. So, but I take a lot of work, but I enjoy it. I like, I like the, I like the fight. I like, sometimes I, I choke, I cry <laughs> and, and <laughs> I could not sleep and was so hard, but I, people would just beat me easily and kind of trying to find a way to like enduring those pain and try to go back and train hard the next day and I, I enjoy the whole process yeah so then you go from juniors and all of a sudden you got a call or an email or whatever happened from coach dave porter of byu in hawaii and then you made the trip to hawaii um which i guess you have to enlighten me on what year that was um take us through that experience wrong moving from china to hawaii to play college tennis uh, yeah, it's really uh, fortunate. I knew Coach Porter uh, before I I was adult, you know, because I started training with the national team in China. That time, Coach Porter was the like technique consultant for the Chinese national team, mm. both men's and women's side. So I met him long time ago, always the winter training camp. And that time I could not really speak English, but I think I always respect the uh, the like elders, you know, elders and not elders. No, no, Coach Porter is still very young. That time it's just, <laughs> you know, just uh, uh, now he's very young too. <laughs> when I met, he's just um, agreeable, you know, obedient. So he 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 likes me to be around. And at the beginning, I did not consider go to college tennis in in the U.S. because it's really hard to learn English. Mm. And at that time, I was already like in enrolled in Chinese, pretty good university in my town. I'm getting like good, like full scholarship. And I just plan just stick around in, in China. Later on, like 
pretty good in our college, you know, learn more. I just got to feel like I want to go out, you know, overseas to to learn English, to like broaden my knowledge. When I was 18, 19, I got some chance to go to like good division one school, but at that time I no no English background, no academic <laughs> foundation. That's I don't think I can make it, but like in early twenties and I more mature, then I feel like uh, something I want to uh, improve in educational field. So I contact Coach Porter again and then get a chance and come over. So yeah, it's a long journey, uh, but I never regret my, my, um, my decision. When I first got here, they want to test out, you know, your, your, uh, your English background and math background, you know. So for English, they, because my score is kind of low, you know, so they want to just really see what can I do. So they just give me a piece of paper in the testing center and they tell me that and pencil. Uh, in half hour, just just use English. Just write anything you can, you know. I only can roll up maybe three sentences. Like, wow. my name's Roma. I'm from China. I would love to play tennis. That's it. You know, I cannot come up any words. So now I'm, I'm still a lot to learn, but compared to that time, I got a little bit improvement. <laughs> Wow, humble beginnings. That's really cool, Rong. And and we thank you, by the way, for coming to Hawaii. Take us through highlights of your college career, Rong. I mean, I looked you up the other day, I think, to put a video up of you on my, on my channel, which, guys, there's like three or four Rong Mom tennis match highlight videos if you want to watch. Uh, Rong, what were some memories you remember um, playing at BYU? Were there any matches you remember really well or things Coach Porter taught you in practice that stuck with you ever since? Yeah, like, yeah, Coach Porter helped me a lot in my game, you know, my forehand, coming to the net. I think in college career, I think best match, I I think I defeat, like, a top player, maybe top three, top two in the whole Division Two is uh, from number one team in the nation, Barry, number one player. Wow. So, long, like, growing three sets, and yeah, I just, like, Coach Porter, like, coaching me on the side, like, good attitude and look for a chance to come in because if it's just power game, you know, ground shows, mm. I don't think I can, can match up with that player, but I find my way to move in, apply some pressure. So that was a good match. And throughout the college career, maybe play some professional tournament, like local challengers, mm. had a couple of good wins against, like, a world rank player, like, top 500. So... That was good experience. I uh, got a little bit lucky, but yeah, because we play a lot in Hawaii, so got used to the wind, you know, the conditions. So a little factors on my side, but doesn't mean I'm better than those guys in the tour. But yeah, so still good memories. You know, but just watching you play wrong and just seeing the fight you put out there is so admirable. Uh, it's inspiring. It makes me want to go hit. And uh, it's so awesome that you're part of BYU with Coach Porter. And um, that's a good segue, you know, into the next thing, because you did mention you're playing in local tournaments. So you played in the Futures, the Honolulu Challenger, Honolulu Masters, all the night doubles, all these local tournaments where you really got your name out there and Hawaii got to know you and kind of inducted you into the Hawaii tennis family and community. What's that experience been like playing all the local tournaments and even Futures? Uh, well, really good, you know, because it's such a good sport. and. Uh, it's nothing like in competitions. So really, can um, um, really see uh, how we perform under pressure and see my weakness, and can really see what else I could work on, you know, to get better. And just the whole atmosphere, like people, um, the people who organize tournament, just just good opportunity to to enjoy the game, you know. So. It's very fortunate that I still got some local tournaments can can participate, mm. and sometimes of course did not play the the best. Maybe due to like everything, you know, could not train that well and, and a lot of different focus. In yeah, but still, it's good experience and and just yeah, I just can't wait for the next like local tournaments to come up again and try to yeah play. Play some points. <laughs>
Is there a particular tennis tournament you look you like playing every year in Hawaii? Yeah, pretty much everything. You know, the yeah, definitely Kainua night doubles or or any like uh, singles or double tournament is my favorite. You know, because can show show again and and see a lot of friends, old friends. You know, my video channel has several videos now of you playing uh, doubles with Wei Yu Su. I don't know if you remember uh, all those matches with him back then, but, like, I think I had one where you played at Puno. There was one where you played for the U.S. Open wild card, which you did that, too, at this court behind me, uh, center court at Corp. Uh, do you remember that at all, playing with Wei Yu in those uh, matches? Yeah. Yes, Wei Yu, too, he's, like, older brother to me, you know, he – look after me like along the way and we're still in touch even though right now he moved to florida so he helped my game a lot too so really fun really fun really fortunate to play with him yeah way you see if you're watching this at brandy wine in florida what's up <laughs> it's good <laughs> to see you wrong you've had so many experiences even up to this point and now you take a right turn really into the next chapter of your career um you're not only a student at the University of Hawaii, or you've been working on it, you're now a coach for the University of Hawaii, and you've been helping out the uh, women's Division I uh, Rainbow Wahine college tennis team over there. Um, how many years have you been over there coaching so far? So far, yeah, four years, at least four seasons. Wow, yeah. that time flies. How's that been? It's really good, like... Um... Uh, thanks to Coach June and all the like administrative staffs from UH gave me an opportunity to work with the tennis team. And the, the girls, they're really good. All the girls, they work really hard and they, they're very lovable. They are just like my kid sisters. And, and the whole environment just not um, helping me to learn the experience to be a better coach, uh, how to help people to get better. Also, um, it gave me like a good like support for my my uh, uh, post graduate study. Mm. Yeah, so I just love to hang out around like between tennis courts, the gym, and locker room to to shower, like rinse off, and then go to classroom and come back in the office, work on some paperwork to learn better and and study. You know, it's busy. It's really busy, but it's meaningful. For me, yeah. What inspired you to um, coach for the University of Hawaii, or what got you into coaching? A few things like sometimes I feel like helping out coaching can help my game too, because not everybody like get the best opportunity to to go around the circuits, always practice with the the really good tennis players around the world. Uh, you know, a lot of money, a lot of for myself. It's hard to travel with my, my Chinese citizen, the passport hmm. thing. And over here, when you, the next thing, if you really love the game, like through coaching, you still can play with the players and they're all good players. They all got a very good potential. Also through like learning, seeing how to compete, you learn a lot like little thing, you know, sometimes when you're a player, you don't see it and then you will reflect maybe something can get better on my own. So keep that interest in, you know, the how, and you, you have to think how, how to, just like earlier you talk about, you need patience to help your students. Mm. And coaching also is a good way to learn how can I serve others better? And you, yeah, just try to get better. And because since this sport is such important to us, so you always want to, get back and try to learn from each other. Can you tell us a little bit about um, UH's seasons the last couple years and uh, how, what's the team looking like if whenever we get back on the court to play college tennis again? What's the current team looking like? Yeah, the, the girls team, they're very strong, actually. Overall, the four years, I think we make to the final every single year. And one year, we won the Big West Conference Championship. and yeah, I feel like every year we got stronger. The current, like, all the return players plus the new recruit, uh, if everything can get back to normal, I think UH could could do better for the next coming season. Yeah, 
I'm really excited for the girls to, to do better next year. Just hopefully we can uh, battle the pandemic. Is there anything in particular you look for co uh, as Coach Wrong when you're um, looking at juniors like uh, up and coming that you might want to uh, that might want to play college tennis? Do you have any tips for those guys um, to get to that level one day if that's their dream? If they really want something, they gonna they just they would do it. You know, they would do it. They would get up early. They would find a way to practice more, just like before. Uh, everybody else, you know, they they against the wall. They just just find like all patience. You just gonna keep that extra. You know, you're willing to sacrifice the time. You know, Saturday sometimes you may just need to say no to some parties. You know, you're just gonna go out there, like practice for extra two hours or even more, and take care of your body and and study hard. It's, mm -hmm. it's the whole process. It just help us to grow. You know. It's not the course tennis doesn't mean only tennis. You're gonna be a good student athlete. So you you're gonna balance your time mm. to be a good student because also if you doesn't have like decent performance, like academic performance, you, you can't even get into the college or maybe some of the college you really want. And you then you got a lot of dedication for your study and for the level we play. And people see the, the the college tennis like really like close to professional, so you definitely need to like invest a lot of time and effort to it. I always remember when I was a kid, I I, I used this proverb, you know, like just like a present, you know, like a farmer, you know. Sometimes they work so hard this year to complete all the preparation for harness, but they put all the effort, but sometimes the, the harness may not come because all the different conditions, uh, the weather, they may not get anything the next year, but they still need to prepare. So, hmm. but the efforts there doesn't mean you, you put your effort, it's gonna pay back. But if you don't put the effort, it, it's never come, you know, but the first premises, you, you're gonna put your heart into it. As long as you give all out, you earn something already, even though the result doesn't come, even though you don't go to college tennis or you not, you may not meet the level you want, but if you do that consistently, it, it will come, you know, I believe that. There's one more thing to do, and it's the most fun part I love of every interview I do, which is my rapid fire question round. And basically wrong, I'm gonna ask you just a random assortment of questions, we'll have some fun. Um, We'll have short answers, quick questions. We'll bang it out, get to the next thing, and maybe we'll know a little more about you now than we had before in the interview. So, uh, okay. Ron, are you ready to go? Okay, I try to understand better. <laughs> okay, I will I'll pay attention. All right, here we go. Uh, question number one. Wrong, Ma, what is your favorite color? Oh, my favorite color, black and pink. Black and pink. Okay, if you had to pick one, what would it be? Black. <laughs> Black, just yeah. like the shirt he's wearing, man. Go both. Yes. Favorite music artist? Uh, Federate uh, Chopin. Oh, what's that? I've never heard of that artist. Oh, oh just classical music, you know. Pian piano list. I don't know if I see the, right, the, the name right. Chopin? Guys, leave a comment in the description down below. Is, did we pronounce that correctly? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm still working on my English, so. Oh, well, I like a lot of artists, but yeah, I like classical music. Yeah. Role model going growing up. Who is your role model as a kid? A lot. Coach Porter is my role model because he changed me a lot of perspective. Like mm. when he, I remember, I don't know, like that time, even doing the road trip, he, he always with his book. Mm. He always loved reading, you know. He reads all the time, and then I try to mimic him. I start reading a lot too. It, it very enjoyable and and learning a lot. And the way he does things, you know, a lot of small details. So like, yeah, you know, he's one of my role models. So yeah, awesome. so I follow him to to uh, study more and get better in teaching. Favorite movie? What's your what's Rong Ma's favorite movie? Oh, movies. I love movies. A lot of, 
I love all kind. Like I love Interstellar. I don't know if you watched that one. I remember you told me you watched that like three, four but times I in the theater. Pick the most. I like. I like Shawshank Redemption. Hmm. What's that about? It's from yeah. He from uh, Stephen King. Stephen King, the one of the like a uh, kind of like a like a novels, mm. like a short novels, like a four seasons. Just one of the script. Yeah, it's good. It's good story. Then they make it in the movies, and I I don't know if you know that actor, Sha- uh, Morgan Freeman. Yes, I know Morgan. Yeah, yeah, he's in the movie. So it's a little older movie, maybe in middle of nineties. Mm. But it's very good storyline. I I really like it. I like like good drama movies, like good acting, good conversations. Very educational, very emotional. Yeah, some movies always ins- inspire me and make me cry a little bit. And <laughs> yeah, we watch over and over again. Racket of choice. What racket does Rong Ma use? Why not use Brabala? So why not use Brabala? Yeah, the pure. Drive. Pure drive. Oh, right yeah. on. You switched, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Most memorable Hawaii tennis experience so far. What's your best Hawaii tennis memory? Yeah, I just watched the uh, Davis Club, watch Brian Brothers. That's a like, good, like, good event because I always admire them. Um, the energy they, they have to course. So I'm so glad Hawaii brought them in and why before the pandemic, I think that was one of the very good like tennis experience in Hawaii. Also a few years ago, the Hawaii Open, it's really good like Kenish Corey and see those legends just like right next to us to practice and see how they train and, and it's very like, memorable experience. Oh, I don't know if you use this stuff, but favorite hair product. Does Rong have a favorite hair product? I don't know. I forget the brand. Maybe <laughs> head and shoulder. Yes. <laughs> head and shoulder. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah. that's basic, but I, awesome. Sometimes they have a good sell. I don't use conditioning that much either. So that's why my hair is pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's lockdown kind of hair, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I got to have before the lockdown, yeah. Favorite Hawaii tennis courts. Where's Rong's favorite place to go hit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, of course. Tennis course, tennis course. Just like surfing, just like beach, just like ocean. <laughs> oh, yeah. right Any yeah, tennis court. Ocean. Yeah, Any, anywhere. I mean, I could pick everywhere besides Manoa course. Doesn't mean I don't like it. Very convenient. We got five courts not far from my place, but it's too junk. I think because rain too much. So very slippery. You cannot really run on those courts. But other than that, other course I like it. I mean, the Kailua, the course, District Park, I like it too. The course is really nice. I like Corp because they got a lot of course. Actually, I like BYU courts. Oh, BYU's courts. Yeah, yeah. Like, back to North North North. Because really, like, the whole atmosphere, really nice. The good, nice campus, small, but very, like, just good. It's not my home. And plus, it's North Shore. After tennis, easy to to go to some of the beach I like and can go back <laughs> surfing. So, okay, yeah, BYU tennis courts. <laughs> That's my favorite courts. Okay, then this next one might be a little hard for you then. Favorite beach? <laughs> I, you know, since this couple of years, when I got back to like start surfing, I did not hang out on the beach that much. Before, I used to lie down on the beach with the book. Why not when I go to the <laughs> beach, normally just for surfing. But I would like Kinky's beach. And North Shore, Kinkies or Sunset. The sand's nice. If you go swim, you don't touch the reef. You know, there's all sand. And it's nice. It's wide open and very clean. It's just good. Like the whole feeling, you know, just really nice. Kinkies and Sunset. That's big waves, bro. Oh, wrong lot charges, guys. That's- yeah, no, 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 no. Not during the winter time. <laughs> during the you cannot swim there. That's oh. way big, you know, so can watch yeah i still not like i charge some bigger way but but it's not that big you know oh favorite place to eat where does wrong like to eat i like japanese hot pot or chinese hot pot but i like 
Cheesecake Factory too. Yeah. Interesting. Wow, hot <laughs> cheesecake factory. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but not for the cheesecake. It's just for the Italian. But they don't have a super good Italian if you ask them very well. But I just, yeah, like oh, it's hard to pick. But yeah, I don't know. Sorry. Yeah, I withdraw <laughs> these questions. A lot of good place to eat, you know. I don't want to offend different restaurants. Hawaii clothing of choice. What's your favorite thing to wear in Hawaii? Under Armour. How are you trying to shirt? Uh, no, I like, I don't know why I already buy clothing, you know, I try to save my money for my future girlfriend, you know, if she needs to buy something. Oh, uh, maybe get some like Quicksilver, like, like shorts, like swimming shorts, sometimes just t-shirts. I, I don't like have favorite in, in clothing, you know. <laughs> Singles or doubles? I like both, I like both, yeah. Now I got a little older, maybe gonna lean on doubles, but I still enjoy singles. Yeah, yeah. I would say singles. Yeah. Forehand or backhand? Which shot do you like better? Forehand. Need still need to get better. Yeah. Favorite pro tennis player? Oh, Rafa Nadal. Rafa. Get better. Or Federer. Oh, excellent oh. choices. Favorite Grand Slam? Which one do you like to watch on TV? Wimbledon. Wimbledon. Yes. Why Wimbledon? Yeah. Very classy. Very elegant, you know. Just just take tennis as a sport to another level. Very classy feel, you know. Charismatic atmosphere when you play on those courts. Yeah, just yeah. I like I like all Grand Slams. I like French Open too. If you could give one tip to an aspiring junior player like you before or a complete beginner in the game, what would Coach Rong tell them? What piece of advice would you give them? Just that belief. If you really like this game, you want to get better, you really want it, you will. As long as you, 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 as long as you want to do it, then you would do it, you know. And it related with the book I read recently. It's about like how to change, break your break your habit bringing yourself it just say like relate to like a physic you know quantum field as anything you think plausible to happen to your life or your futures it will happen you know but just another word to saying if you believe something you think you can be the one you want you you will as long as you have that like persistency you know you just keep doing it you keep thinking about it you will get better and you will be healthier, you will be rich, just anything, anything is possible, you know. So, yeah, I, I strongly believe that and the book gives a lot of evidence convince us to do it. <laughs> also, if you, mm. I will relate to that movie, Pursuit of Happiness. Mm. I don't know, remember some of the, the father told the son, you know, like, just make sure if some people think you are not as good as you think, uh, uh, don't ignore it. You know, as long as you believe it, you just keep pursuing your dream. Yeah, you can do it. You know, yeah, just that everything's possible. Wrong. That pretty much brings us to the end of the interview. Um, I'd like to leave the floor open here for closing thoughts. Uh, wrong. Is there anything you'd like to say to the Hawaii tennis community right now? Yeah, I'm just really grateful the whole community to to having me like with this, like including like college tennis atmosphere competitions, the events, and all the the tennis um, parents, the kids who have the same common goals, same like share the same love about tennis related, so we can thrive and enjoy make our life better. Really like lucky to be part of it, you know, the tennis community. And I hopefully I can do my best to give back and, and to help grow this uh, prosperity. We're blessed to have you here, buddy. Yeah. I really appreciate it. It is so cool getting to know you and, and getting to meet you all those years ago. And, and here we are now doing this, uh, giving back to the sport that gave so much to us. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to Tennis Ninja TV. I hope you enjoyed today's interview. 
Uh, we got to thank Rongma for coming on board today and spending time with us. And uh, guys, I know in Hawaii, we just got our tennis courts closed. We got to be safe right now. Um, so guys, uh, just hang in there. I'll have a bunch of content for you guys to hopefully be entertained for a while. And uh, we'll just keep dreaming of the time we'll be back on the court again, as uh, I'm hoping it'll be real soon. So uh, Rong, thanks for joining us. Guys, thank God you. bless. Be safe. And aloha. Laters, guys. Thank you, Shane.